as we move forward, I'll be borrowing a few more of your time to explain the new laws that have been set to replace the existing Indian Penal Code, that is, we all know IPC, the Code of Criminal Procedure, we all know CRPC in short, and the Evidence Act. So three new criminal laws, those have already received the presidential accent as per the Gazette notification, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm surely hopeful that those will come into force from this 1st of July 2024. Because these were placed before the Parliament as bills, and those were examined by the Parliament Standing Committee of Home Affairs, and the three laws might be all be knowing because it is now everything we get to know from Google. Uh, the first one we say that, that is the Bharatiya Naya Sanghita. It is of 2023. In short, it is BNS that will be replacing the Indian Penal Code, commonly known as IPC. The Bharatiya Nagari. Shuraksha Sanghita 2023, in short that is BNSS, that will be replacing Code of Criminal Procedure. 1973, in short, we all know it is termed as CRPC. And the last one is the Bharatiya Shaksha Sanghita. It is also known as Bharatiya Shaksha Adhiniyam 2023. In short, it is known as the Indian Evidence Act. So new laws, what will the new laws do? The new laws will definitely provide an opportunity for an overall of the laws which underline the criminal justice system. These three laws have a number of illustrations from daily life to clarify their provisions. These are exhaustive laws and picture will be clear after rules are framed and enforcement is done. However, these can be examined, these, these three laws, what I stated, can be examined on four important aspects, on four important aspects of purpose, important changes, and the roadmap of enforcement. Let me start with the purpose. As per the Home Minister's speech in the Lok Sabha, what I have jotted down, following are the important objectives of these three new laws. First one, the aim of these new laws is not to punish. It is not to punish, but to provide justice. Punishment will be given to create a sentiment of stopping crime. The aim is to take the conviction rate up to 90%. For the first time, filing EFIRs will be possible. What we cannot do, whenever we are in problem, we are suffering some situation, we are disturbed, we try to go to the local police station for assistance, for control, for help, and the police refuses to accept an FIR. Police, moreover, refuses to even accept a written complaint. We all know some of us might be having a bad experience. So now the provisions have come that filing EFIR. So you can do it from your home, you can do it from your mobile. And a zero FIR is always there anywhere in any police station. If I'm there and if I'm suffering some problem in a separate jurisdiction, which is not my place of home, which is not my place of work, somewhere else, and I'm facing some problem, then definitely the police has to register a complaint. That complaint is known as zero FIR. A zero FIR of an incident can be registered in any police station. So that will be made a rule. The complaint will be sent to the police station concerning within 15 days. The whole procedure, right from filing an FIR to case diary, charge sheet, and getting judgment will be digitized. So there is nothing hide and seek. There is nothing like tearing up the papers. There is nothing like writing, overwriting, uh, deleting. Those cannot be done because these FIR to case diary to charge sheet and getting judgment, everything will get digitized. All courts in the country will also be computerized by 2027. We are when we are going to courts. I believe that uh, some of you have been to courts, so you'll be finding that there are computers in front of the judges. There are computers in front of the court officers. So it is getting digitized in a slow process, but it is happening. Now, one, one another important point, in case of incidents of sexual violence, the statement of the victim and video recording will be compulsory. The police cannot manipulate. The police cannot get bribed, and the police cannot do whatever he feels like doing. So whatever is the incident, the statement of the victim will be video recorded. A visit by a forensic team to a crime scene will be a mandatory if the crime entails a punishment of seven years or more. 
three mobile forensic science laboratories will be present in every district. Vehicles don't have to be kept till the end of the case once videography is done. Now police will have to provide a status update on a case within 90 days. The police never does that. We file a complaint, we wait, something will happen, nothing happens. A written complaint might be taken by putting a stamp. Sometimes if we are known to the police, for your satisfaction, what they will do, they will do a GD entry. That's a general diary entry and they will say go home with this sleep. And you go home with this sleep and you go on sleeping. FIRs are usually not taken up. What we have to do, we have to go a roundabout way, we have to find a lawyer, we have to go to him, we have to say that this is the problem I am facing, police is not helping me, police is not cooperating with me. And then what we have to do, we have to file an application before the uh, court uh, under section 156 clause 3, requesting the magistrate to treat this complaint as an FIR. So those are the processes. But now, regard, after coming of this law, police will have to provide a case update on a case within 90 days. Every district will have a police official who will give a certificate to the family of those arrested uh, that they are responsible for the arrested person. Information will have to be provided both online and personal. Now, trial to be allowed without criminals if he or she has been declared absconding. So, so trials will commence. The government will not be able to withdraw a case entering punishment of seven years, imprisonment or more without hearing the victim. This will protect the citizen's right. So to stop delays in cases, changes have been made. For cases entering less than three years of imprisonment, the summary trial will be enough. This will reduce cases in sessions scored by 40%. See, everything is being done. I understand what we are discussing. It is basically the criminal-based law. But there is a vast area in civil laws. People are also suffering in civil matters. But the justice delivery system is not thinking in that. They are only thinking about the criminal defensive, the criminal matters, what can be amended. But what about the civil laws? What about the tenancy laws? It is still in the same bad shape. A person who is enjoying a prime property at the cost of 200, nothing has been increased for the landlord. The, law, the, the, land, the tenant will say, come, I'll make a double. So what you get? You get 400. In today, in 2024, if somebody is paying 400, will that, have, will that match even your corporation tax? So that aspect is still neglected, the civil matter. Whatever concentration is being done, is being done only on the criminal matters. But there are lots and lots of cases pending in civil matters. So I'll get back to here. Now, so filing for filing complaints against civil servants, authorities concerned will have to give or deny permission within 120 days. It sometimes happens that um, I, 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 I am uh, abused, I am molested, or I feel uh, 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 mentally tortured by a person in a higher position and I cannot take steps. So that part has been covered by here s s saying that for filing complaints against civil servants, authorities concerned will have to give or deny permission within 120 days. If no response is received, then it will be treated as yes. Now charges will have to be filed within 90 days. Court can extend it for another 90 days. So that is what I was telling that charge sheets never come up, FIRs are never done and the cases go on pending and pending for years. A probe will have to be finished within 90 days and should be sent to, sent for trial. After trial, judgment will have to be given within 30 days which will have to be uploaded online within a week. By this overall of the criminal justice system, the public will get justice in a maximum of three years. To stop political use of punishment, Waivers by government as per new law, death sentence can only be converted to life imprisonment. And life imprisonment can be pardoned only within seven years of punishment. This is to ensure those with political influence do not escape the law. So that part has also been taken care of. Now, in very short, I'll discuss about the three laws that have been coming up. The first one is the Bharatiya Naha Sanghita 2023. In short, that is the Indian Penal Code, which will be replaced by Bharatiya Naha Samhita. The first part that has been 
that has been changed it is very important that is the gender neutrality and uniformity age we all know that for the age limit was prescribed 16 for males and 18 for female but now it has been made uniform it is 18 for male and female both as per this gender neutrality and uniformity age as per bns rape laws continue to operate only for women as we all know as were the provisions in ipc however the offenses during dealing with procuration of a girl which was defined in section 3, 366a of ipc as illicit intercourse has been made gender neutral in bns so it is it is affecting both it is not that only a woman friendly law it is so it is also a man friendly law IPC details the offence of outraging the modesty of women in section 354A, we all know that, and voyeurism in section 354C. Both the offences have now been made gender neutral. So it is not only for the woman who can only accuse and say that, no, I have been molested, I, there is voyeurism. The, even the male parts can also come up with uh, saying that, yes, I have been molested by a lady staff in a, in a fiduciary relationship. So both the offences have now been made gender neutral for the accused in the new BNS. It means a woman can also be booked for such offence under the provisions of BNS. For the offence dealing with kidnapping of minors, the IPC prescribes age limit of 16 years for male and 18 years for female. That has been made uniform to 18 years. This is the first point in this CRPC, Bharatiya Naya Sangeeta. The second part is the damage to public property. What sometimes happens between the students get uh, uh, agitated or the public get agitated and they start damaging public property. So in BNS, the offences related to causing damage to public property now carry a graded fine. It means the fine will now correspond to the amount of damage caused by the accused. So it will be calculated and the accused has to pay that amount. Then only he can be released. The third point that is very important, we all know, that is terrorism. Section 113 of the BNS has brought terrorism under the ambit of criminal law. It was not previously there. For this purpose, definition of terror, terror activities, a substantial content is imported from the Unlawful Prevention Act, Atrocities Act, UAPA. The offense involving terror financing is broader in the BNS than in UAPA. Provisions in UAP are more stringent and the cases are hard in special courts. Now this sedition law has been repealed and in that place a new law with the Hindi word you can say Desh Droho. Desh Dro, that has been implemented. It will have, be a, have a broader meaning. One another important aspect is fake news. That is happening we all know fake news is always there. So that was dealt previously in section 153 of IPC, which dealt with imputations, that's hate speech, which is prejudicial to national integration. It is commonly referred to as hate provision, which criminalizes disharmony or feelings of enmity or hatred or ill will between communities. So section 197 of the PNS has introduced a new provision, which criminalizes publishing false and misleading information which is prejudicial to national integration. Another part, we all know this also, this was a Supreme Court judgment regarding homosexuality and adultery. Previously, you all know, probably you might be aware that there was a section 377 which dealt with unnatural offenses. So 377 of the IPC criminalized the homosexuality among other unnatural sexual activities. The Supreme Court in 2018 struck down the provisions of Section 377 in the IPC, which criminalized consensual homosexual relations. It has been repealed under the BNS. The offense of adultery, Section 497 of the IPC, was struck down by the Supreme Court in 2018. It has also been omitted in the BNS. Now, another important point, college students would be knowing in future, it is the false promise to marry. False promise to marry. It's a very important point. Section 69 of the BNS criminalizes the deceitful promise to marry. Whoever by deceitful means or by making promise to marry a woman 
without any intention or fulfilling the same has sexual intercourse with her such sexual intercourse not amounting to the offense of rape shall be punished with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to 10 years to 10 years and shall also be liable to fine the deceitful means shall include false promise of employment. What happens? You say, you will, I'll, I'll be giving you a better job. I'll be making your career or something like that. Employment or promotion or inducement or marrying. Now, another point, I'll get into this, the next part, that is Bharatiya Nagarik Shuraksha Shandita. That is in, similar to Code of Criminal Procedure, BNSS. Now, we all know the hierarchy of courts probably, but the courts start from the lower, it goes up, it goes up, up to the Supreme Court. So that, that, that part remains as it is. So you start from the lower court, then you go up to the high court, and the final matter comes down to the Supreme Court, and the final verdict is from the Supreme Court. Now, the timeline for the, these procedures, these have been framed in this BNSS. New law prescribes time, time laws for various procedures, for giving judgments 30 days, informing the victim of the progress of investigation, that is 90 days, framing of charge by the sessions court, that is 60 days, uh, medical reports within seven days. One very important aspect that has been started in this new law, that is community service. We all know this is very much prevalent in foreign courts, in foreign countries, when a person is accused, when a person has committed a small offense, he is sent to community service to modify him, to reform him, without sending him to jail. So that part has been taken take care of in this new BNSS law. That is the community service. It has introduced the concept of community service as a form of punishment for petty offenses. It includes offenses like attempt to commit suicide, public servants unlawfully engaged in trade, theft of property of less than 5,000, public intoxication and defamation, so this is a, I think this is a very good attempt on the part of the legislature to frame this community service. The next point, we all know that is very common point, the handcuffing by the police. Whenever somebody is arrested, the police handcuffs. Regarding this point, the power of the police officers to use handcuffs has been, extend, it has been expanded. Beyond the time of arrest, to include the stage of production before court as well. What used to happen previously or if you have been to court, uh, the officers used to, uh, in this fashion, hold the convicts so that they cannot run away. And sometimes it's happened that lots of convicts run away. So to prevent that, handcuffs up to reaching the court. Of course, it is for the dangerous criminals, not for the petty criminals who have a very bad court record. Section 43, clause 3 of the original bill permitted the use of handcuffs to prevent the escape of individuals accused of serious offenses and ensure safety of police officers and staff during arrests. One more thing, that is the forensic investigation. That's all, that also come into the ambit of this new law. New law mandates forensic, forensic investigation for offenses punishable with at least seven years of in, imprisonment. In such cases, forensic experts will visit crime scenes to collect forensic evidence and record the process on mobile phone or any other electronic device. If a state does not have forensic facility, it shall utilize such facility from another state. The next point is signature and finger impressions. The CRPC empowers the magistrate to order any person to provide specimen signatures or handwriting. The new law expands this to include finger impressions. So the new law expands this to include finger impressions and even voice samples. So what happens sometimes one people threat somebody over the phone. So why they can go, murder korodobo, hey korodobo, she korodobo, that gets recorded you place it before the court that there is a threat to my life, there is a threat to murder, then these voice samples will be collected as, a, as an evidence. You cannot say, no, it has been tampered, this is not my voice. So this will help in the long run, definitely. So the new law expands this to include finger impressions and voice samples which can be collected 
from a person who has not been arrested and police custody. The detained person must now be produced by the police before the magistrate or released in petty cases within 24 hours. It was always there that within 24 hours you have to produce the accused before the magistrate. But now it is again made mandatory within 24 hours. The prescribed 15 day period of police custody can now be aggregate of shorter periods of custody sort over the entire period of an investigation lasting 60 or 90 days. It means nothing. It means only that if you are caught in a heinous crime, if you are caught in a cyber crime, the police will ask custody for your investigation, for finding out the truth. So that custody time limit is now defined by seven days or further seven days or 10 days. In that way, it will be lasting for 60 or 90 days, but not at a stretch more than 15 days. Last part is the Evidence Act. Regarding Evidence Act, see, whatever we say in Criminal Procedure Code, in IPC, whatever we say, but whatever we say that this, this, the crime has occurred, uh, he is an accused, uh, he needs punishment, everything needs to be proved. Until it is proved, it, the fact remains disproved. So there comes the role of this Evidence Act. So it is a very important act because you find a person, you take him as per IPC sections, you say you have done these, 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 these wrongs. As per Criminal Procedure Code, you bind him into court proceedings, you say as per this procedure you have to follow and you have to get into the criminal system, judicial and justice system. But what happens if your case is not proved? So that is the important part for this, this part, that is the Indian Evidence Act, it has also been changed and now it is known as Bharatiya Shaksha Shanhita. The first part of this is documentary and oral evidence. We all know, whenever we go to court or whenever we go somewhere, it is what you prove through your documents. If you are the owner of a property, how will you prove? You, you will prove it through your document. You have purchased a flat. How will you prove? You will prove it to, through the sale deed what you have, that this is the document. See, I am the owner of this property. So documentary evidence includes primary and secondary evidence. Primary evidence includes original documents such as electronic records and video recordings. Secondary evidence contains documents and oral accounts that can prove the contents of the document. And the next part that has come in, it was needed of course, that is electronic evidence. Because now everything is being done electronically. You buy something, you buy electronically. You sell something, you sell something electronically. You pay something, you are paying in electronically. You are paying a taxi, you are using electronically. So this electronic evidence has is now mandatory. So documentary evidence also includes information storage, information stored in electronic records that have been printed or stored in optical or magnetic media. So new law has expanded only its scope. And the last part, again I'll go get into this, is police confessions. Any confession made to a police officer is inadmissible. So this any confession made to a police officer is inadmissible. Confessions made in police custody are also inadmissible, unless recorded by a magistrate. However, if a fact is discovered as a result of information received from an accused in custody, that information may be admitted if it directly relates to the fact discovered. So I will conclude by saying that new laws will definitely provide an opportunity for an overall of the laws which underline the criminal justice system. These are basically exhaustive laws having fruitful purpose, making important changes and is definitely a roadmap to quick enforcement.